Hogwarts Legacy may famously be referred to as part of the Harry Potter franchise, but there's plenty of fantastic beasts to befriend too. This video is going to explore where to find them, their uses in games such as riding and upgrading gear, as well as which, in my humble opinion, are beast. Uh, uh best. Right then, let's get to it. Down at the bottom of this list, we have the cute little fuzzballs known as puff schemes. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not denying that these are pretty adorable. So much so, in fact, that I imagine there's definitely a merchandising opportunity here. But in terms of gameplay utility, their use case appears fairly limited. Let's just give some context here. Each of the 13 beasts in the game provide crafting materials after being groomed and fed inside a room of requirement for Varium. In the case of the puff schemes, it's their fur. We can use these items on a loom to enhance pieces of clothing. We can straight up improve their offense and defense stats, or add a unique modifier which enhances one area in particular, for more build-oriented gameplay I suppose. The use of puff skin fur is to apply said unique modifiers, at tier 1 of 3. The issue here is whenever you unlock more powerful tier 2 or 3 upgrades, you're obviously going to use them over tier 1. Now we could argue that puff skin fur is great for applying lesser upgrades in early game, except the entire beast breeding mechanic doesn't get unlocked until we're in the mid game. At this point you should have unlocked plenty of tier 2 or even tier 3 modifiers, rendering puff skeins and their fur fairly useless. But it's not just about the beast's crafting utilities for this ranking. Let's look at some other benefits to the puff skeins. The capture mechanic in this game involves holding our nab sack out for a second before hitting a prompt button a number of times to vortex suck whatever beast into our TARDIS bag slash pokeball. For some animals, we have to hit this prompt up to six times, which can be a right pain as the beasts can run away before we complete the capture. But puff skeins are by far the easiest to catch, as we only have to hit the button once. Their dens are also pretty numerous, with the closest one to Hogwarts being just between there and Hogsmeade. This makes them the best candidate if you want to speedrun the Beast Capture Challenge, which unlocks you a Phoenix statue. Even still, this isn't really a necessary thing to do, since you'll soon complete this challenge anyway by expanding your ranged arsenal of wonderful creatures. Speaking of, the giant purple toad sits at number 12 for me, primarily due to its lack of cute fluffiness. Okay, that's not as shallow as it sounds, trust me. You see, with most beasts we'll be harvesting nice things like feathers or fur. With toads though, we feed them, groom them, and what do they give you in return? The warts from their back. Okay, granted, I don't really know what else they'd give, but still. Gross. However, we can take these and use them for our second and third upgrades when improving the offense stat on a piece of clothing. Toads will give us three warts at a time and we only need one per upgrade, so farming the amount we need isn't too difficult. When breeding them as well, the breeding pen will spawn what pretty much looks like a giant bubble. Now I must admit I haven't seen toad eggs in real life, but I have seen frogs eggs, and I don't know if I see the resemblance here, but then again, these are magic toads, so their eggs can look like whatever. A great place to find these slimy fellas is in the western forbidden in forest or in box, and they can be captured with three button clicks, which for a creature that can't fly away isn't terrible. If you don't have any toads, then you'd have to be buying their warts at 400 galleons each from the broom and peck store in Hogsmeade. I guess the unpleasant job of harvesting them adds a premium to their price. Next we have the Fwoopa, an African bird which can be found in a variety of different colours. These produce a bird song that's said to drive a listener's mat. Apparently this doesn't seem to affect our character though, either down to the whole ancient magic thing, or perhaps the difficulty which would be involved in implementing such a mechanic. Still, canonically, they do induce madness, and if you want to roleplay that by, say, visiting them and then making bizarre decisions, then you're free to do that. One of their earliest nests can be found in the region south of Hogwarts, just up from the hamlet of Keenbridge. They'll require four clicks to capture, which is not the worst number in the world, but when they're a predominantly flying beast, I'd say they're up there as one of the most difficult. Upon petting and grooming, they'll gift you three feathers per bird per time, an item which Broom and Peck sell for 250 apiece, and which are used in levels 2 and 3 defense upgrades. Therefore, they're pretty important to have in a vivarium when making those armor ratings as good as they can be. But overall, their difficulty in capturing and canonical madness-inducing song place them lower on the list for me. Another of the bird beasts here, Diracles are a magical bird which can vanish and rematerialize to escape danger. Their feathers are sold, just like Fruppers, for 250 galleons at Broom and Peck. They offer essentially the same utility as Puff Skeen fur, but for tier 2 enhancements, with one feather applying one enhancement to one item of clothing. This is a lot more useful because by the time we get around to capturing these, we'll likely have a lot of tier 2 enhancements unlocked, but maybe not so many from tier 3. Even still, I'd say for the majority of the game, tier 3 
enhancements are still likely what you'll be going for. These are merely a nice stand-in for enhancements you haven't fully unlocked or gear below legendary. A great place to find them is in the hills south of Hogwarts right over here. They take four clicks to capture, just like Froopers, though their ability to vanish can sometimes make this an annoying task. Still, Arresto Momentum or Levioso should allow you to make short work of this. Now, you might find the appearance of a Diracool to look somewhat familiar for some reason, and that is because these birds are in fact literally supposed to be dodos. We muggles may think they're extinct, but wizard kind know better. That is the canonical explanation in this universe anyway. I mean, in real life, science is supposed to be bringing dodos back by isolating pigeon genomes at some point in the near future. So we'll see if they possess any magical abilities then, I suppose. At number 9, we have Thestrals. Now, Thestrals are such a cool concept that I really, really like. The skeletal design, the fact that one has to witness death in order to see them, is all very cool and original. What I'm not so impressed by for this game is that the ability to ride on one came as part of a deluxe edition pre-order bonus. I mean, call me old-fashioned, but I just miss the days when DLC charged you extra money for something of actual substance. A new campaign, or even just one quest, teeming with bonus items, items to unlock is fine in my book, but the Thestral, Dark Arts Arena Pack and Cosmetic Gear offer precious little bonus hours of valuable time spent in the game. It's cool that now I can choose between a broom, hippogriff and Thestral, but paying an extra $10 as well as pre-ordering at full price already for items which could literally have been rolled into the base game at not much extra work feels like a pretty shallow corporate money grab in my opinion, and puts a minor stain on what otherwise feels like a game with a ton of love, care and attention to detail behind it. Anyway, day one DLC rant aside, at least everybody can capture and place Thestrals in the Vivariums. They're definitely one of the coolest and most majestic beasts here, and fit right in with the swamp biome especially. You'll need one lot of Thestral hair for each level 2 and 3 defensive upgrade, and can harvest 3 at a time from each Thestral. These can also be bought again at Broom and Peck in Hogsmeade, but for 400 galleons each. One of the first Thestral dens you'll find is up here in Northford Bog, and be warned, these for me were the hardest creature to capture in the whole game. They require 5 clicks to capture, which can't be done in Arresta Momentum's freeze time, and once they're free they will either bolt at record speed, or worse still, fly straight off. This one might take a few times to get the hang of, but eventually, with a bit of luck too, you'll get there. Overall, I love Thestrals as a concept, they are one of my favourite parts of the Harry Potter franchise, and the opening cutscene at the start of the game where you see them for the first time is just a brilliantly disturbing piece of storytelling. I just don't appreciate using their popularity as a means to squeeze even more money from your most loyal audience members. Again, proper DLC is fine, but this is just horse armour all over again. Now, I must admit, I haven't really paid that much attention to Fantastic Beasts. I've seen the first two, like once each, and don't remember much about them. The Harry Potter films, on the other hand, were my childhood, and I can and have quoted them word for word several times. But one of the things I do distinctly remember being a part of Fantastic Beasts are these cute little fellas. Nifflers are a platypus type species, one of whom will be famously owned by Newt Scamander a fair few decades after this game. They can be found in several dens, but the closest one I could find was over here in the south of the Forbidden Forest. They need three clicks to capture, which should be doable before they run away, and they yield three clumps of fur each. Fur can also be bought at a rate of 250 galleons, just to give you an idea of value, and it's needed in both level 2 and 3 offensive upgrades. Again, an important part of becoming a more powerful witch or wizard later in the game. Personally, I reckon these guys enjoy the beach vivarium the most, but to be honest, aside from the swamp, I think they fit in everywhere pretty well. Ranking right in the middle, we have a bird you'll be wanting several more of than most of the other Fantastic Beasts. Jobinol Feathers are our baseline ingredient for offensive upgrades on clothing, with three feathers required to upgrade legendary gear at levels 1, 2 and 3. Fortunately, in reflection of this higher demand, each bird will yield five feathers, which cost 150 galleons each at Broom and Peck. The lowest price, yes, but when you consider how many we need, this is certainly a creature you'll want to be farming yourself. Luckily, they're pretty easy to find and capture with plenty of dens around including this one in North Ford Bog. The two-click capture rate makes acquiring them an easy task despite their ability to fly away. The birds have some interesting lore as well and will apparently remain silent until the day they die. Now, whilst birdsong is sometimes definitely soothing to listen to, that sounds much more preferable to going mad from whoopers. Biggest tip for jobinoles then, have quite a few of them, say four at the very least, and make sure to breed some as well.
In a very similar vein, Mooncalf fur acts as the baseline of our defense clothing upgrades, with the same three fur needed at each level on legendary gear, two on extraordinary and one on superb. Bear in mind superb can only be upgraded once and extraordinary twice. For top tier stats, you will want high level legendary gear. Now Mooncalves are a cute looking cross somewhere between a cow and a giraffe, with cow patterned fur, long necks and ginormous eyes. You can find their camp by this tree just above the Quidditch pitch, though as their name would suggest, they can only be found at night, under the light of the moon. They require three clicks to capture and you'll be wanting several if you plan on quickly upgrading many items of clothing. You can again buy the fur for whatever reason at Broom and Peck though for 150 galleons. They're a cute little creature overall and their presence in your vivariums is one of the most crucial to your general crafting infrastructure. Now, I'm more of a dog than a cat person, but that isn't to say that I don't find cats to be a brilliant and adorable companion too. That being said, the relative feline cuteness of the Neasles are not the reason necessarily that they are sitting this high up my list. Rather, Neasle hair happens to be the required ingredient for applying tier 3 traits to gear. The closer you get to endgame items and top tier upgrades, the more you'll be needing this ingredient. Better still, even at the high quality upgrades you can get with it, only one Neasle hair will be required for each a signed trait. The first den I found them in was down here in the South Sea Bog, though be careful with this one because there is an armoured troll right nearby. At four clicks to capture, there is a small chance you'll have to keep chasing them and thus alert this big fella, like I did. Once you have a few though, you'll be able to harvest three hair at a time from each one. It's an item that Broom and Peck deem sellable at 400 galleons, which is the same as the Toad Warts and Thestral Hair, though I definitely deem the use case for this item to have greater value to the player. Also, for those wanting to get a pet cat in the game, this is the closest you're going to get. Canonically, they can be a little aggressive, though they seem happy enough in the vivarium and are plenty friendly towards us. Of course, you could just pet all the random house cats around Hogwarts and pretend they're your pets too. There's no shortage of cats, it's just that these are the only ones you can pick up and take home, which is more than can be said for dogs. Because instead of getting a pet dog in this game, we get the next entry on the list. The Graphorn is one of the last beasts to be unlocked in the game, tying into one of the latest quests. Now, I won't spoil any story here, but it's clear from the mount selection wheel throughout the game that we'll unlock a ground mount at some point. The Graphorn is said mount, and you'll have to make a long trip down to the bottom corner of the map to obtain it. Bear in mind visiting outside of the quest itself, there will be nothing here. I can tell you that from experience. And when you do finally come across it, you'll have to face one of the game's toughest boss fights before subduing and riding it. When when you finally do though, oh boy. One of the things I really want to commend in this game is the epic score that often plays when you ride beast mounts. I'll talk in more detail about this for the Hippogriff too, but riding the Graphorn for the first time felt utterly epic, though I'm not entirely sure how they got away with pretty much using the music from How to Train Your Dragon. I don't know if you can hear that in the background and I don't dare turn it up because I genuinely worry it will be recognized as the same song and copyrighted, but really go and listen to the soundtrack yourself after completing this quest. It is so similar. And if you just had several seconds of silence there, it's because YouTube copyright claimed what they believed to be the song First Flight from How to Train Your Dragon. Anyway, what with a broom, a hippogriff, and maybe Thestral, a ground mount ought to feel a little redundant, right? Well, luckily, with its insane size, ability to charge, as well as being able to climb hills like Skyrim horses, riding the Graphorn is what it needs to be to be worthwhile. A fun experience which makes you feel like a badass. It's not viable to ride in all areas, but adds a new way to get around and a new way to fight. And we haven't even mentioned its crafting utility yet. The Graphorn, believe it or not, will give you horns. When looking after in a vivarium. We'll get three per time and require one for each level three offensive upgrade. Remember there's only one grap horn here in the game and ingredient recharge time is 25 minutes. So you'll want to harvest a few of these on a regular basis when going for that top level gear. Otherwise you'll be forking a pretty pricey 700 galleons each at Broom and Peck. Oh and make sure to pet this one. As I mentioned before I see the grap horn as something of the stand-in for a pet dog with this petting animation being exactly why. I mean it may look like Cthulhu and a rhinoceros had a baby, but it behaves like an affectionate canine when it does this.
Into the top three now, Phoenixes really are amazing creatures. They can carry immensely heavy loads, their tears have healing powers, and their feathers are crucial in level three defense upgrades. I like to believe that that canonically ties back to the healing properties of the bird itself. There is one Phoenix in the game to acquire, and to do so, you'll have to first complete all main and side quests related to the Room of Requirements. Finally, you'll be sent on a classic dungeon crawl to locate and rescue this beautiful bird from poachers. And returning it to the room, you'll also be rewarded with the fourth and final Grasslands Vivarium. Now, as I mentioned, you'll need one feather for each level three defense upgrade and can collect three from the Phoenix at once. This is without a doubt my favorite of the birds and is truly majestic. Since Phoenixes burst into flames when they die and are reborn from the ashes, this technically makes them immortal. It's also established that they're incredibly rare. You can look at this however you want, but personally, I like to believe in my own headcanon that this Phoenix will eventually wind up in the possession of Albus Dumbledore, who will name it Forks. Before that may or may not happen though, be sure to collect as many feathers as you can, since this is the only ingredient which can't otherwise be bought from Broom and Peck, and thus the only way to defensively upgrade gear to level 3 is with the help of this magical bird. Another majestic creature with incredible healing properties is that of a unicorn. Not only do these horses have horns on their head, they also have patterned fur, which is very beautiful. And if you get very lucky like I did, you can even find a shiny gold one. However, they are without a doubt one of the most difficult beasts to capture in the game. They have one spawn point in the forest next to Upper Hogsfield and only one will spawn at a time. What's more, they take a whole six clicks to capture. So you'd better get used to hitting that button when prompted. I spent a Ages, trying to find both a male and female for breeding and kept just finding males. Let me know in the comments if you've had this as well because honestly I began to give up hope that there were any female unicorns until finally one fateful evening on maybe my seventh try I flew down to their den and there she finally was. You'll need one hair for each level three defense upgrade with three harvested as usual from each unicorn at a time. This hair sells for 700 galleons at Broom and Peck so be sure to gather as much as you can from farming instead. That beautiful gold unicorn by the way has zero physical stat differences and all these shiny starred beasts are in fact simply aesthetically different. Overall the unicorns are number two for me because they feel like one of the most majestic and magical beasts in this game. Coming across them in the forest is the type of encounter which makes this game feel magically rich and highlights the care and devotion that's gone into making it feel as such. Also owning a golden unicorn makes the Pokemon collecting side of my brain very very happy. Now just make them a second ground mount alongside the the grab horn and things will be perfect. Could it be anything other than these iconic beasts? Hippogriffs are very proud creatures, and insulting one may just be the last thing you ever do. That being said, by treating these beasts with respect and care, we can not only earn a friend for life, but a flying mount way cooler, if less convenient, than a broomstick. Just like the Graphorn and Phoenix, Hippogriffs only unlock after completing a specific quest. Though fortunately, this one is closer to mid-game, and you don't have to wait too long before flying one of these. Our mount is named Highwing, and she is a white feathered hippogriff. We can also get the darker one as a pre-order bonus, but this is entirely an aesthetic difference and you're not really missing out on anything without it. Flying Highwing for the first time was just like with the Graphorn, an experience massively enhanced by the game's use of score. One of my favourite scenes in Prisoner of Azkaban is when Harry flies Buckbeak for the first time, with the soundtrack that plays there being one of the best pieces of music from the franchise. And I'm pleased to say that flying Highwing in this game is able to recapture that feeling of magic which I felt as a kid when watching one of the top to Harry Potter's. I always fly by Hippogriff on long journeys now, simply in the hope that the music will play and the nostalgia will kick in. Not only that, but Hippogriff feathers are the other ingredient we need alongside Graphorn horns for level three offensive upgrades. As usual, we harvest three feathers and each item of gear uses one of them. They are, alongside unicorn hair and Graphorn horns, the third item to sell for 700 galleons at Broom and Peck. But provided you've completed the quest to unlock Highwing, this is entirely unnecessary. Now we can acquire more Hippogriffs at this den in the Forbidden Forest and capture them in five clicks. Not the easiest task when we bear in mind that they can fly away and I may just have got lucky here but I did find them easier to capture than Thestrals. Oh and I'd really recommend that you breed these guys as well because who knew but baby hippogriffs are incredibly cute and it is for that reason and that reason alone of course that these proud beasts belong at the top 
of my list. But let me know what you think, because after all, a lot of this ranking order is based on my subjective opinion, and I'm curious to hear what your favourite beasts are. I hope this video helped you out in learning all about Hogwarts Legacy's fantastic beasts and where to find them, as well as, you know, how they're useful and such. As always, if you enjoyed this video, likes are greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you soon in another video.